Translated by Bhikkhavodi. Suttacentral.net and Suttas.com. SA.Yutnanakaya 45. Connected Discourses on the Path. 094, SN.45.1, SN.45.30, SN.45.1. Ignorance thus have I heard. On one occasion they. Blessed one was dwelling at Savathi in Jitas. Grove, Anathapandikas Pandikas Park. There the Blessed. One addressed the Pikhas thus, Pikhas. Venerable Sir, those Pikhas replied. The Blessed One said this. Pikhas, ignorance is the forerunner in the entry upon unwholesome states, with shamelessness and fearlessness of wrongdoing following along. For an unwise person immersed in ignorance, wrong view springs up. For one of wrong view, wrong intention springs up. For one of wrong intention, wrong speech springs up. For one of wrong speech, wrong action springs up. For one of wrong action, wrong livelihood springs up. For one of wrong livelihood, wrong effort springs up. For one of wrong effort, wrong mindfulness springs up. For one of wrong mindfulness, wrong concentration springs up. Pikhas, true knowledge is the forerunner in the entry upon wholesome states, with a sense of shame and fear of wrongdoing following along. For a wise person who has arrived at true knowledge, right view springs up. For one of right view, right intention springs up. For one of right intention, right speech springs up. For one of right speech, right action springs up. For one of right action, right livelihood springs up. For one of right livelihood, right effort springs up. For one of right effort, right mindfulness springs up. For one of right mindfulness, right concentration springs up. SN.45.2 Half the Holy Life Thus have I heard. On one occasion the Blessed One was dwelling among the Sakyans where there was a town of the Sakyans named Nagarika. Then the Venerable Ananda approached the Blessed One. Having approached, he paid homage to the Blessed One, sat down to one side, and said to him, Venerable Sir, this is half of the holy life, that is, good friendship, good companionship, good comradeship. Not so, Ananda. Not so, Ananda. This is the entire holy life, Ananda, that is, good friendship, good companionship, good comradeship. When a bhikkhu has a good friend, a good companion, a good comrade, it is to be expected that he will develop and cultivate the Noble Eightfold Path. And how, Ananda, does a bhikkhu who has a good friend, a good companion, a good comrade, develop and cultivate the Noble Eightfold Path? Here, Ananda, a bhikkhu develops right view, which is based upon seclusion, dispassion, and cessation, maturing in release. He develops right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration, which is based upon seclusion, dispassion, and cessation, maturing in release. It is in this way, Ananda, that a bhikkhu who has a good friend, a good companion, a good comrade, develops and cultivates the Noble Eightfold Path. By the following method too, Ananda, it may be understood how the entire holy life is good friendship, good companionship, good comradeship, by relying upon me as a good friend, Ananda, being subject to birth are freed from birth, being subject to aging are freed from aging, being subject to death are freed from death, being subject to sorrow, lamentation, pain, displeasure, and despair are freed from sorrow, lamentation, pain, displeasure, and despair. By this method, Ananda, it may be understood how the entire holy life is good friendship, good companionship, good comradeship. SN.45.3 Sariputta At Savathi Then the Venerable Sariputta approached the Blessed One, and said to him, Venerable Sir, this is the entire holy life, that is, good friendship, good companionship, good comradeship. Good, good, Sariputta. This is the entire holy life, 
Sariputta, that is, good friendship, good companionship, good comradeship. When a bhikkhu has a good friend, a good companion, a good comrade, it is to be expected that he will develop and cultivate the Noble Eightfold Path. And how, Sariputta, does a bhikkhu who has a good friend, a good companion, a good comrade, develop and cultivate the Noble Eightfold Path? The rest is in the preceding Sutta. SN.45.4 The Brahmin At Savathi Then, in the morning, the Venerable Ananda dressed and, taking bowl and robe, entered Savathi for alms. The Venerable Ananda saw the Brahmin Janus Soni departing from Savathi in an all-white chariot drawn by mares. The horses yoked to it were white, its ornaments were white, the chariot was white, its upholstery was white, the reins, goad and canopy were white, his turban, clothes, and sandals were white, and he was being fanned by a white chari. People, having seen this, said, Divine. Indeed, sir, is the vehicle. It appears to be a divine vehicle indeed, sir. Then, when the Venerable Ananda had walked for alms in Savathi and returned from his alms round, after his meal he approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him, sat down to one side, and said to him, here, Venerable Sir, in the morning I dressed and, taking bowl and robe, entered Savathi for alms. I saw the Brahmin Janus Soni departing from Savathi in an all-white chariot drawn by mares. People, having seen this, said, Divine indeed, Sir, is the vehicle. It appears to be a divine vehicle indeed, Sir. Is it possible, Venerable Sir, to point out a divine vehicle in this Dhamma and discipline? It is possible, Ananda, the Blessed One said. This is a designation for this noble eightfold path, the divine vehicle and the vehicle of Dhamma and the unsurpassed victory in battle. Right view, Ananda, when developed and cultivated, has as its final goal the removal of lust, the removal of hatred, the removal of delusion. Right intention, right concentration, when developed and cultivated has as its final goal the removal of lust, the removal of hatred, the removal of delusion. In this way, Ananda, it may be understood how this is a designation for this noble eightfold path, the divine vehicle and the vehicle of Dhamma and the unsurpassed victory in battle. This is what the Blessed One said. Having said this, the Fortunate One, the Teacher, further said this. Its qualities of faith and wisdom are always yoked evenly together. Shame is its pole, mind its yoke tie. Mindfulness the watchful charioteer. The chariot's ornament is virtue. Its axle yahana, energy its wheels. Equanimity keeps the burden balanced. Desirelessness serves as upholstery. Goodwill, harmlessness and seclusion. These are the chariot's weaponry. Forbearance its armor and shield as it rolls towards security from bondage. This divine vehicle unsurpassed originates from within oneself. The wise depart from the world in it, inevitably winning the victory. SN.45.5 For what purpose? At Savathi, then a number of bhikkhus approached the Blessed One. Sitting to one side, those bhikkhus said to the Blessed One, Here, Venerable Sir, wanderers of other sects ask us, for what purpose, friends, is the holy life lived under the ascetic Gotama? When we are asked thus, Venerable Sir, we answer those wanderers thus, it is, friends, for the full understanding of suffering that the holy life is lived under the Blessed One. We hope, Venerable Sir, that when we answer thus we state what has been said by the Blessed One and do not misrepresent. Him with what is contrary to fact, that we explain in accordance with the Dhamma, and that no reasonable consequence of our assertion gives ground for criticism. Surely, Pikhas, when you answer thus you state what has been said by me and do not misrepresent me with what is contrary to fact, you explain in accordance with the Dhamma, and no reasonable consequence of your assertion gives ground for criticism. For, Pikhas, it is for the full understanding of suffering that the holy life is lived under me. If, Pikhas, 
wanderers of other sects ask you, but, friends, is there a path, is there a way for the full understanding of this suffering, being asked thus, you should answer them thus, there is a path, friends, there is a way for the full understanding of this suffering. And what, Pikhas, is that path, what is that way for the full understanding of this suffering? It is this noble eightfold path, that is, right view, right concentration. This is the path, this is the way for the full understanding of this suffering. Being asked thus, Pikhas, you should answer those wanderers of other sects in such a way. SN.45.6 A certain Pikhu, 1. At Savathi. Then a certain Pikhu approached the Blessed One. Sitting to one side, that Pikhu said to the Blessed One. Venerable Sir, it is said, the Holy Life, the Holy Life. What, Venerable Sir, is the Holy Life? What is the final goal of the Holy Life? This noble eightfold path, Pikhu, is the Holy Life, that is, right view, right concentration. The destruction of lust, the destruction of hatred, the destruction of delusion, this is the final goal of the Holy Life. SN.45.7 A certain Pikhu, 2. Venerable Sir, it is said, the removal of lust, the removal of hatred, the removal of delusion. Of what now, Venerable Sir, is this the designation? This, Pikhu, is a designation for the element of Nibbana, the removal of lust, the removal of hatred, the removal of delusion. The destruction of the taints is spoken of in that way. When this was said, that Pikhu said to the Blessed One, Venerable Sir, it is said, the deathless, the deathless. What now, Venerable Sir, is the deathless? What is the path leading to the deathless? The destruction of lust, the destruction of hatred, the destruction of delusion, this is called the deathless. This noble eightfold path is the path leading to the deathless, that is, right view, right concentration. SN.45.8 Analysis At Savathi Pikhas, I will teach you the noble eightfold path and I will analyze it for you. Listen to that and attend closely, I will speak. Yes, Venerable Sir, those Pikhas replied. The Blessed One said this. And what, Pikhas, is the noble eightfold path? Right view, right concentration. And what, Pikhas, is right view? Knowledge of suffering, knowledge of the origin of suffering, knowledge of the cessation of suffering, knowledge of the way leading to the cessation of suffering, this is called right view. And what, Pikhas, is right intention? Intention of renunciation, intention of non-ill will, intention of harmlessness, this is called right intention. And what, Pikhas, is right speech? Abstinence from false speech, abstinence from divisive speech, abstinence from harsh speech, abstinence from idle chatter, this is called right speech. And what, Pikhas, is right action? Abstinence from the destruction of life, abstinence from taking what is not given, abstinence from sexual misconduct, this is called right action. And what, Pikhas, is right livelihood? Here a noble disciple, having abandoned a wrong mode of livelihood, earns his living by a right livelihood, this is called right livelihood. And what, Pikhas, is right effort? Here, Pikhas, a Pikhu generates desire for the known arising of unerous and evil unwholesome states, he makes an effort, arouses energy, applies his mind, and strives. He generates desire for the abandoning of arisen evil unwholesome states. He generates desire for the arising of unerous and wholesome states. He generates desire for the maintenance of arisen wholesome states, for their non-decay, increase, expansion, and fulfillment by development, he makes an effort, arouses energy, applies his mind, and strives. This is called right effort. And what, Pikhas is right mindfulness. Here, Pikhas. A Pikhu dwells contemplating the body in the body, ardent, clearly comprehending, mindful, 
having removed covetousness and displeasure in regard to the world. He dwells contemplating feelings and feelings, ardent, clearly comprehending, mindful, having removed covetousness and displeasure in regard to the world. He dwells contemplating mind and mind, ardent, clearly comprehending, mindful, having removed covetousness and displeasure in regard to the world. He dwells contemplating phenomena in phenomena, ardent, clearly comprehending, mindful, having removed covetousness and displeasure in regard to the world. This is called right mindfulness. And what, Pikhas, is right concentration? Here, Pikhas, secluded from sensual pleasures, secluded from unwholesome states, a Pikhu enters and dwells in the first Yahana, which is accompanied by thought and examination, with rapture and happiness born of seclusion. With the subsiding of thought and examination, he enters and dwells in the second Yahana, which has internal confidence and unification of mind, is without thought and examination, and has rapture and happiness born of concentration. With the fading away as well of rapture, he dwells equanimous and, mindful and clearly comprehending, he experiences happiness with the body, he enters and dwells in the third yahana of which the noble ones declare, he is equanimous, mindful, one who dwells happily. With the abandoning of pleasure and pain, and with the previous passing away of joy and displeasure, he enters and dwells in the fourth yahana, which is neither painful nor pleasant and includes the purification of mindfulness by equanimity. This is called right concentration. SN.45.9 The Spike At Savathi Pikhas, suppose a spike of rice or a spike of barley were wrongly directed and were pressed upon by the hand or the foot. That it could pierce the hand or the foot and draw blood, this is impossible. For what reason? Because the spike is wrongly directed. So too, Pikhas, that a Pikha with a wrongly directed view, with a wrongly directed development of the path, could pierce ignorance, arouse true knowledge, and realize Nibbana, this is impossible. For what reason? Because his view is wrongly directed. Pikhas, suppose a spike of rice or a spike of barley were rightly directed and were pressed upon by the hand or the foot. That it could pierce the hand or the foot and draw blood, this is possible. For what reason? Because the spike is rightly directed. So too, Pikhas, that a Pikhu. With a rightly directed view, with a rightly directed development of the path, could pierce ignorance, arouse true knowledge, and realize Nibbana, this is possible. For what reason? Because his view is rightly directed. And how does a Pikhu do so? Here, Pikhas, a Pikhu develops right view which is based upon seclusion, dispassion, and cessation, maturing in release. He develops, right concentration, which is based upon seclusion, dispassion, and cessation, maturing in release. It is in this way, Pikhas, that a Pikha with a rightly directed view, with a rightly directed development of the path, pierces ignorance, arouses true knowledge, and realizes Nibbana. SN.45.10 Nandaya at Savathi. Then the wanderer Nandaya approached the Blessed One and exchanged greetings with him. When they had concluded their greetings and cordial talk, he sat down to one side and said to the Blessed One, How many things, Master Gotama, when developed and cultivated, lead to Nibbana, have Nibbana as their destination, Nibbana as their final goal. These eight things, Nandaya, when developed and cultivated, lead to Nibbana have Nibbana as their destination, Nibbana as their final goal. What eight? Right view, right concentration. These eight things, when developed and cultivated, lead to Nibbana, have Nibbana as their destination, Nibbana as their final goal. When this was said, the wanderer Nandaya said to the Blessed One, Magnificent, Master Gotama. Magnificent, Master Gotama. From today let Master Gotama remember me as a lay follower who has gone for refuge for life. SN.45.11 Dwelling, 1. At Savathi. Pikhas, I wish to go into seclusion for half a month. 
I should not be approached by anyone except the one who brings me alms food. Yes, venerable sir, those Pikhas replied, and no one approached the Blessed One except the one who brought him alms food. Then, when that half-month had passed, the Blessed One emerged from seclusion and addressed the Pikhas thus. Pikhas, I have been dwelling in part of the abode in which I dwelt just after I became fully enlightened. I have understood thus, there is feeling with wrong view as condition, also feeling with right view as condition. There is feeling with wrong concentration as condition, also feeling with right concentration as condition. There is feeling with desire as condition, also feeling with thought. As condition, also feeling with perception as condition. When desire has not subsided, and thought has not subsided, and perception has not subsided, there is feeling with that as condition. When desire has subsided, and thoughts have not subsided, and perceptions have not subsided, there is also feeling with that as condition. When desire has subsided, and thoughts have subsided, and perceptions have not subsided, there is also feeling with that as condition. When desire has subsided, and thought has subsided, and perception has subsided, there is also feeling with that as condition. There is effort for the attainment of the as yet unattained. When that stage has been reached, there is also feeling with that as condition. SN.45.12 Dwelling, 2. At Savathi. Pikhas, I wish to go into seclusion for three months. I should not be approached by anyone except the one who brings me alms food. Yes, venerable sir, those Pikhas replied, and no one approached the Blessed One except the one who brought him alms food. Then, when those three months had passed, the Blessed One emerged from seclusion and addressed the Pikhas thus. Pikhas, I have been dwelling in part of the abode in which I dwelt just after I became fully enlightened. I have understood thus, there is feeling with wrong view as condition, also feeling with the subsiding of wrong view as condition. There is feeling with right view as condition, also feeling with the subsiding of right view as condition. There is feeling with wrong concentration as condition also feeling with the subsiding of wrong concentration as condition. There is feeling with right concentration as condition, also feeling with the subsiding of right concentration as condition. There is feeling with desire as condition, also feeling with the subsiding of desire as condition. There is feeling with thought as condition, also feeling with the subsiding of thought as condition. There is feeling with perception as condition, also feeling with the subsiding of perception as condition. When desire has not subsided, and thought has not subsided, and perception has not subsided, there is feeling with that as condition. When desire has subsided, and thoughts have not subsided, and perceptions have not subsided, there is also feeling with that as condition. When desire has subsided, and thoughts have subsided, and perceptions have not subsided, there is also feeling with that as condition. When desire has subsided, and thought has subsided, and perception has subsided, there is also feeling with that as condition. There is effort for the attainment of the as yet unattained. When that stage has been reached, there is also feeling with that as condition. SN.45.13 A Trainee At Savathi Then a certain Pikhu approached the Blessed One. Sitting to one side, that Pikhu said to the Blessed One. Venerable Sir, it is said, a trainee, a trainee. In what way is one a trainee? Here, Pikhu, one possesses a trainee's right view, a trainee's right concentration. It is in this way that one is a trainee. SN.45.14 Arising, 1. At Savathi, Pikhus, these eight things, developed and cultivated, if Anarasa do not arise apart from the appearance of a Tathagata, an Arahant, a perfectly enlightened one. What eight? Right view, right concentration. These eight things. SN.45.15 Arising, 2. At Savathi. Pikhas, these eight things, developed and cultivated, if Anarasa do not arise apart from the discipline of a fortunate one. What eight? Right view, right concentration. These eight things. 
SN.45.16 Purified, 1. At Savathi. Pikhas, these eight things, purified, cleansed, flawless, free from corruptions, if Anarasan do not arise apart from the appearance of a Tathagata, an Arohant, a perfectly enlightened one. What eight? Right view, right concentration. These eight things. SN.45.17 Purified, 2. At Savathi. Pikhas, these eight things, purified, cleansed, flawless, free from corruptions, if Anarasan do not arise apart from the discipline of a fortunate one. What eight? Right view, right concentration. These eight things. SN.45.18 The Cox Park, 1. Thus have I heard. On one occasion they, Venerable Ananda and the Venerable Bada, were dwelling at Pataliputta in the Cox Park. Then, in the evening, the Venerable Bada emerged from seclusion, approached the Venerable Ananda, and exchanged greetings with him. When they had concluded their greetings and cordial talk, he sat down to one side and said to the Venerable Ananda, Friend Ananda, it is said, the unholy life, the unholy life. What now, friend, is the unholy life? Good, good, friend Bada. Your intelligence is excellent, friend Bada, your ingenuity is excellent, your inquiry is a good one. For you have asked me, friend Ananda, it is said, the unholy life, the unholy life. What now, friend? is the unholy life. Yes, friend. This eightfold wrong path, friend, is the unholy life, that is, wrong view, wrong concentration. SN.45.19 The Cox Park, 2. At Pataliputta. Friend Ananda, it is said, the holy life, the holy life. What now, friend? is the holy life and what is the final goal of the holy life. Good, good, friend Bada. Your intelligence is excellent, friend Bada, your ingenuity is excellent, your inquiry is a good one. For you have asked me, friend Ananda, it is said, the holy life, the holy life. What now, friend, is the holy life and what is the final goal of the holy life? Yes, friend. This noble eightfold path, friend, is the holy life, that is, right view, right concentration. The destruction of lust, the destruction of hatred, the destruction of delusion, this, friend, is the final goal of the holy life. SN.45.20 The Cox Park, 3. At Pataliputta. Friend Ananda, it is said, the holy life, the holy life. What now, friend, is the holy life, and who is a follower of the holy life, and what is the final goal of the holy life? Good, good, friend Bada. Your intelligence is excellent, friend Bada, your ingenuity is excellent, your inquiry is a good one. For you have asked me, friend Ananda, it is said, the holy life. The holy life. What now, friend, is the holy life? and who is a follower of the holy life, and what is the final goal of the holy life? Yes, friend. This noble eightfold path, friend, is the holy life, that is, right view, right concentration. One who possesses this noble eightfold path is called a liver of the holy life. The destruction of lust, the destruction of hatred, the destruction of delusion, this, friend, is the final goal of the holy life. SN.45.21 Wrongness At Savathi Pikhas, I will teach you wrongness and rightness. Listen to that. And what, Pikhas, is wrongness? It is, wrong view, wrong concentration. This is called wrongness. And what, Pikhas, is rightness? It is, right view, right concentration. This is called rightness. SN.45.22 Unwholesome States At Savathi Pikhas, I will teach you unwholesome states and wholesome states. 
listen to that. And what, pikas, are unwholesome states? They are, wrong view, wrong concentration. These are called unwholesome states. And what, pikas, are wholesome states? They are, right view, right concentration. These are called wholesome states. SN.45.23 The Way, 1. At Savathi. Pikas, I will teach you the wrong way and the right way. Listen to that. And what, Pikas, is the wrong way? It is, wrong view, wrong concentration. This is called the wrong way. And what, Pikas, is the right way? It is, right view, right concentration. This is called the right way. SN.45.24 The Way, 2. At Savathi. Pikas, whether for a layperson or one gone forth, I do not praise the wrong way. Whether it is a layperson or one gone forth who is practicing wrongly, because of undertaking the wrong way of practice he does not attain the method, the Dhamma that is wholesome. And what, Pikas, is the wrong way? It is, wrong view, wrong concentration. This is called the wrong way. Whether it is a layperson or one gone forth who is practicing wrongly, because of undertaking the wrong way of practice he does not attain the method, the Dhamma that is wholesome. Pikas, whether for a layperson or one gone forth, I praise the right way. Whether it is a layperson or one gone forth who is practicing rightly, because of undertaking the right way of practice he attains the method, the Dhamma that is wholesome. And what, Pikas, is the right way? It is, right view, right concentration. This is called the right way. Whether it is a layperson or one gone forth who is practicing rightly, because of undertaking the right way of practice he attains the method, the Dhamma that is wholesome. SN.45.25 The Inferior Person, 1. At Savathi. Pikas, I will teach you the inferior person and the superior person. Listen to that. And what, Pikas, is the inferior person? Here someone is of wrong view, wrong intention, wrong speech, wrong action, wrong livelihood, wrong effort, wrong mindfulness, wrong concentration. This is called the inferior person. And what, Pikas, is the superior person? Here someone is of right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, Right effort. Right mindfulness. Right concentration. This is called the superior person. SN.45.26 The inferior person. 2. At Savathi. Pikas, I will teach you the inferior person and the one who is worse than the inferior person. I will teach you the superior person and the one who is better than the superior person. Listen to that. And what, Pikas? is the inferior person. Here someone is of wrong view, wrong concentration. This is called the inferior person. And what, Pikas, is the one who is worse than the inferior person? Here someone is of wrong view, wrong concentration, wrong knowledge, wrong liberation. This is called the one who is worse than the inferior person. And what, Pikas, is the superior person? Here someone is of right view, right concentration. This is called the superior person. And what, Pikas, is the one who is better than the superior person? Here someone is of right view, right concentration, right knowledge, right liberation. This is called the one who is better than the superior person. SN.45.27 The Pot At Savathi Pikas just as a pot without a stand is easily knocked over, while one with a stand is difficult to knock over, so the mind without a stand is easily knocked over, while the mind with a stand is difficult to knock over. And what, Pikas, is the stand of the mind? It is this noble eightfold path, that is, right view, right concentration. This is the stand of the mind. Pikas, just as a pot so the mind without a stand is easily knocked over, while the mind with a stand is difficult to knock over. 
SN.45.28 Concentration At Savathi Pikhas, I will teach you Noble Right Concentration with its supports and its accessories. Listen to that. And what, Pikhas, is Noble Right Concentration with its supports and its accessories? There are, Right View, Right Mindfulness. The One-Pointedness of Mind. Equipped with these seven factors is called Noble Right Concentration with its supports, and also with its accessories. SN.45.29 Feeling At Savathi Pikhas, there are these three feelings. What three? Pleasant feeling, painful feeling, neither painful nor pleasant feeling. These are the three feelings. The Noble Eightfold Path, Pikhas, is to be developed for the full understanding of these three feelings. What is the Noble Eightfold Path? It is Right View, Right Concentration The Noble Eightfold Path is to be developed for the full understanding of these three feelings. SN.45.30 Uddiya At Savathi Then the Venerable Uddiya approached the Blessed One, and said to him, Here, Venerable Sir, when I was alone in seclusion a reflection arose in my mind thus, five courts of sensual pleasure have been spoken of by the Blessed One. But what now are those five courts of sensual pleasure? Good, good, Uddiya. These five courts of sensual pleasure have been spoken of by me. What five? Forms cognizable by the eye that are desirable, lovely, agreeable, pleasing, sensually enticing, tantalizing. Sounds cognizable by the ear. Odors cognizable by the nose. Tastes cognizable by the tongue. Tactile objects cognizable by the body that are desirable, lovely, agreeable, pleasing, sensually enticing, tantalizing. These are the five chords of sensual pleasure spoken of by me. The Noble Eightfold Path, Uddiya, is to be developed for the abandoning of these five chords of sensual pleasure. And what is the Noble Eightfold Path? It is, Right View, Right Concentration. This Noble Eightfold Path is to be developed for the abandoning of these five chords of sensual pleasure. YouTube Video Buddhist Sutras